Blender 2.83 has entered Beacon 4, which is the final stage of development before its official release in about two weeks time. I've been using Blender 2.83 for a few months now, and I'm going to go through some of my favourite features coming to Blender in no particular order. So the first thing I want to talk about here is an overhaul to the cloth simulation. If you've ever run a cloth sim in Blender before, you probably know that it can be a bit of a painful process. I've got a simulation running right here and so far so good, but the problem really comes when we enable self collisions, which is something we almost always have to do. Suddenly the animation grinds to a halt, the entire thing takes an age to bake. You can see I'm getting a maximum of like 1.5 frames per second right now, which is pretty disgraceful, despite this being a very simple animation running on a good computer. Luckily the whole system has been overhauled and they've made it much more efficient and much more stable as far as I can tell. The Blender Foundation reckon it's about 15 to 20% faster in their tests. In my tests I've found that the improvement's even greater than that. So here's a much more complex simulation running in 2.83. There's a cloth material and it's bouncing off all these tubes, falling over itself. It's lovely and smooth and it's running about four or five times faster than the other sim was, despite all the added complexity here. So I ran quite a few more cloth sims in Blender 2.83. You can see some of those on the screen right now. They all worked perfectly, even with the self collisions enabled. I rendered all these out in Eevee and every single one of these clips took just a few minutes to create from start to finish. So the cloth sim overhaul leads us right into our next feature, which is the awesome cloth brush, which is finally officially part of Blender and was developed by Pablo de Barro. If you haven't seen this thing in action already somehow, it's basically a fully fledged cloth simulation that runs inside the sculpting tools. You can literally paint realistic cloth surfaces right onto your models in real time. No other piece of 3D software has anything like this as far as I'm aware. This tool really simplifies your workflow. If you ever make curtains, furniture, clothing, beds, pillows, or anything that would normally require a full cloth simulation on a static mesh, you can probably just do it with this sculpting tool. You can see here that Pablo is creating a realistic ribbon around this cap, and it takes him just a few seconds to paint this detail on. This is something that would probably take like 15 minutes to get looking right with regular sculpting tools. So there's a big difference in the time saved there. This cloth brush has two different modes. You can use it in a plane fall off, which will affect the whole mesh, or it has a radial fall off mode, which is more like a traditional sculpting brush, where you're only gonna affect the area directly under the brush. Feature three that I wanna talk about is adaptive sampling. This is something that I've been looking forward to come to Blender for a long, long time. Traditionally, when you render something in Blender, Every single pixel gets the exact same number of samples. It doesn't matter how noisy that area is, if you set it to 120 samples, every pixel gets 120. So if we look at this scene, which you might recognize from my last video, you can see that the candle and the crystal ball are really noisy, but the desk is actually already quite clean. Even in viewport mode, it has a few fireflies, but it's not bad. By enabling the adaptive sampling, Blender will give less samples to the less noisy areas and it will use more samples to clean up the more noisy areas. So you can really cut down on your render times without really affecting quality at all. The fourth feature that we need to talk about here is the face set brush. If you're familiar with ZBrush, face sets are basically Blender's version of polygroups. They're a type of mask that can be applied to the polygons of your mesh but it's a much more flexible system than the old style of sculpting mask. You can see here that I'm painting on different masks at the same time. You can make as many of these masks as you want. You can also hold down the shift button and that'll relax the actual topology of your mesh and it conforms it to the shape of the face set. So it gives you this really nice smooth cutout shape. Here's another cool video from Pablo's Twitter account where he combines this face set tool with that cloth brush from the last one and you get this really nice upholstery effect and it takes them just a few seconds. I think this is absolutely mind blowing to be honest. And now what I think the moment we've all been waiting for, Blender's undo system has finally been fixed. If you were somehow unaware of this, Blender's undo system was notoriously slow, especially in object mode. 
if you have lots of objects in the scene. I'm mashing Ctrl Z here and nothing's happening. The reason it was so slow before was because Blender essentially had to reload every single object in the scene, even if you were only undoing a change that would affect one object. So here's a comparison with Blender 2.83. I've got all these objects that I've duplicated and I'm trying to undo it, and they are disappearing much faster. So those are my five favourite features coming to Blender this month. Let me know in the comments which ones you're looking forward to, especially if you think I've missed one. I've probably overlooked at least one feature here. I haven't had a good look at everything. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you around for the next one.